Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Mikey and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the most important iPad apps that everybody should have, especially if you're a student. Now, for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm an undergraduate student here in Canada where we make maple syrup from scratch. Yes, I know you probably can't believe it, but we Canadians do make maple syrup from scratch. Now, of course, I'm kidding. I'm actually a science student here in Canada. I just thought that'd be funny. Now, before we get started with the video, I would ask that you guys please smash that like button down below and smash that subscribe button down below because it does help me out a lot and it's free, so you may as well just do it. Now, the first app I'm going to talk about is Notability. Now, I already have a previous video talking about Notability and how I exactly use it on my channel that you guys can check out right here. But essentially, Notability is a note taking app that you could, you know, import PowerPoints in PDFs and you essentially can annotate them. So if I open up my Notability app right here, you can see that I have all my lectures. And if I open any random lecture, you can see, you know, I wrote a couple things here, wrote a couple things there, wrote a couple things there. And I like it a lot because of the versatility that you could have with it. You could essentially move things around. So if I want to move this and I want to move it somewhere else, I could easily do that and there's a lot of cool features that you could do with it that I talk about actually in my other notability video like I said earlier um, but other than that that's kind of why I like notability so much now the second app that I want to talk about is one called calculator pro plus now I know what you might be thinking like yo Mikey why the heck are you talking about a calculator when it's already pre-installed well actually what you guys probably don't know and what I didn't know before I got the iPad is that it doesn't have a calculator app and I don't really understand why Apple did that like to be honest it's really really unsmart of them to do that but basically there's a bunch of calculator apps on the app store and a lot of them kind of suck. I just found calculator pro plus to be a very good one, a very solid one. There is a bunch of other ones out there. Um, this is essentially how it looks. And if I do quickly two plus two equals four, that's essentially how many championships LeBron James has. If you're wondering, he has four championships and hopefully this year he gets a fifth one. Now, the next app we're going to talk about is one called Todoist. Now, this app is essentially a reminders app, and you can make a bunch of different reminders for it. Now, I used to use Apple Reminders so much, except I found that it didn't really have a lot of organization to it. All you could really do is create reminders and you know, that's basically it. On Todoist, you can essentially organize reminders into different categories, you know, whether that's school, your personal life, family, friends, you can have different groups of them. And you can also prioritize them into a list like priority one, priority two, priority three, really urgent, not so urgent. You know, you could really organize it a lot. Plus you can have different reminders. So let's say I wanna be reminded, um, you know, to take out the trash tomorrow. I can get reminded tomorrow morning and tomorrow night. So just in case I don't get it done in the morning, I get it done at night. Now, another reason why I like the app is it understands actual native human language so if i write out the trash at 9 tomorrow it understands exactly what i mean and then it can actually input it into my reminders app so i don't have to go into different setting and put in the different time this just saves a lot of time now the next app I'm gonna talk about is something called Pigment. Now Pigment is essentially a coloring book. So I remember when I was younger, I used to have a bunch of different crayons, you know, different colors. And I would always ask my parents, yo, like get me some coloring books because it was fun. And I really had nothing else to do with my life. So I basically colored a lot. So now when I'm like bored of studying and I wanna have some time to chill back, maybe I'm opening and I'm watching Netflix and I wanna like do something as well while I'm watching Netflix, I start to color because I literally suck at drawing. Like, I don't know about you guys, but my drawing, it literally sucks. Like I think the best thing I draw is like a sick man with like hair, that's basically the best I could do and pigment is really really fun and it's really just enjoyable to use and yeah it's just really fun so let me show you how it works so if I open the app right here and I choose any random coloring book at random and I do uh, we'll open it and then I can come over here and I could choose any color I want so let's say I want this blue or I want that blue or I want this blue it doesn't really matter let's say I'm gonna choose this blue and we'll make it into a marker and I could just come over here and I could start coloring and coloring and coloring and coloring and it's just really fun because the end product ends up looking really really good now the next app I'm gonna talk about is Notion. Now Notion is basically this organizational app that allows you to integrate calendars, to-do lists, uh, note-taking for classes, and a bunch of things essentially into one app. And I really like it a lot. Like if you guys don't know what Notion is, I would recommend you guys check out this video above right here. That's essentially a starter guide to how to use Notion from scratch, because I would recommend basically anybody use it. It's the number one app that I would say personally that you guys should download on your iPad or on any device you have at all. Basically I use Notion for school. Um, so let's Let's say I were to open my school setup right here. Um, I do have a video actually talking about school and how I use it for school linked above right here as well. But basically here's my school stuff. I have my whole schedule coming up. Uh, let's say we we're to go to March 2nd. You could see that I already finished a bunch of my stuff for March 2nd, but this is what I had planned for it. And I already checked it off the to-do list. And if I come over here, I could also take notes for the classes. And if I come over here to the primary docking station, that's essentially where I have everything that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. And yeah, that's how I use Notion. 
Now, another app that's really, really cool is one called XMind. And this is essentially how you can create your own mind maps. Um, this is really cool if you wanna create a really nice diagram for like a presentation or an assignment, that's kind of what I use it for. But if you also wanted to remember, you know, let's say the central nervous system, you could do that on XMind because you can create your own, I guess like arrows, you know, you can create your own diagram and it looks really cool. So if I open the app right here and we press plus, there's a bunch of already preset templates. Let's say we choose this template um, and it opens. Then we have a bunch of things over here and I can essentially add more tabs. So subtopics and subtopics, or I can make multiple different ones in one and then it ends up looking really, really cool. And that's why I like it a lot, especially for presentations. I use it so much and it just, it just takes your presentations to a whole other level. Personally, I think that when I put it in my presentations, the professors just thought it was really cool and ended up giving me a better mark than you know other people that just had a regular presentation without any cool diagrams like I did. Now the next app I'm gonna talk about is one called Any Buffer. Now this app is essentially how you can copy paste like different files, uh, text, even like sketches into this app and then you could retrieve it later on. So let's say for example, you wanted to copy an image into this app that you're gonna use in, I don't know, a presentation or you wanted to send someone by text or you wanted to put it in, I don't know, your notes, then you could copy it into this app and it'll essentially save there basically forever. They have their own internal storage and it syncs between all your devices. So let's say for example, I copy a file like a PDF document into this app, I can go on my iPhone and I can open that PDF document. So I don't need to wait on sending it to my iPhone and then trying to figure out where it is. And if I didn't send it and I didn't save it in a correct location, that just becomes really hectic and any buffer just makes it really, really simple. I personally didn't have this app for like the first year of having my iPad, but once I downloaded it, I started using it so much and it helped me save a lot of time. Now the next app I'm gonna talk about is something called Pocket. Now Pocket is really cool because it allows you to essentially use websites offline. So let's say you're on the go and you don't have Wi-Fi, or like you're on the train, you're on your way to school or you're on the bus and you wanted to you know, do some research maybe or you wanted to read something offline and you didn't have internet, you could do that before leaving and it saves to Pocket. And what's also cool about Pocket is that it saves to all your devices. So you know, you could download it on your iPad and then view it on your iPhone. So let's say I were to come to like a random website. So I was reading this article about coffee consumption and I literally just come up right here and I quickly press pocket and it's basically saved. And now if I open the pocket app, it will be saved right here and I could basically view every single thing about it. And if I also wanted to, I could actually listen to the article or I could listen to the webpage. So if I'm on the go and I wanna to listen to, I don't know, like a blog post that someone posted and you wanna listen to it, you could also do that over here. Now the next app I'm gonna talk about is one that I think a lot of people don't take advantage of and that's just the regular Apple Files app. Now with the Apple Files app, I have it integrated where if I download anything to my computer, it goes on my desktop, it will automatically come on my iPad and that is super easy to use and I think a lot of people should take advantage of that and take advantage of the iCloud library because it is super useful and it helps back up all your information. So anything that I have on my computer, anything that I have on my downloads, any document that I have, everything is in the Files app so I would recommend you all make sure that you integrate your whole you know mac your iphone everything you integrate it all together so you could access any file any photo any screenshot anything you download you could access it on the go or if you're at home you could access it all in one place now the final app I'm gonna talk about is one called Microsoft Office Lens. Now this app is a really, really, really nice scanner app that I personally enjoy because it's free. A bunch of scanner apps out there are free, but then they have like a seven day free trial, a three day free trial, some next free trials, just a bunch of things that make you have to pay for something. And Microsoft Office Lens is really cool because right when you take a picture and scan the document, it allows you to integrate it into other platforms really easily. Like if I wanna take a file and I wanna put it into Notability, I could do that really, really easily. So like. Let's say for example, I just scanned a document and I wanna put it into Notability. Simply, I just come down here, more apps, uh, Notability, and then I could easily just put, you know, I could either put it into an existing note or I could put it into, a uh, create a new note and it's just really, really simple and easy like that. Now that basically comes to the end of our video. I hope some of the apps I discussed, you guys actually didn't already have and you're now you're able to download them and start using them. But basically that's it. Thank you guys so much. Oh, uh, don't forget to subscribe and like down below because like I said before, it helps me out so much and it's free. So you may as well just do it anyways. But basically that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.